The beast shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and they that dwell on earth shall wonder when they behold the beast that was, and is not, yet is. For five millennia, I have fought to be heard in this world, but only a few listen. Now, finally, everyone will hear me. I will blanket the earth with a truth that is hot from hell. The world will await the sound of my voice to know whether the sun will rise or the rivers flow. I was here before. When these walls stood tall, when this soil was turned red with spilled blood. <laughs> oh, the flowers that bloomed. Nourished by the blood of your enemies. I was here when the Egyptians turned back the Canaanites, a thousand years before the Nazarene came into this world. But nothing, nothing compares to the battle that is coming. And he gathered them together in a place called Armageddon. He who controls Jerusalem at the end of days shall rule the world. Precisely. Nixon will win by a landslide. I guarantee it. Nobody will vote for a Catholic. Dick Nixon will not be president. Really? Mm, not this time, for sure. Why not? He doesn't look good on television. Well, <laughs> the man's running for president, not auditioning for gun smoke. General, I'll tell you now, the world is on television. And that's where people will form their opinions. People like me, will shape those opinions. I have more than 100 television and radio stations, magazines, newspapers. If you read, watch television, listen to the radio, you're gonna hear what I have to say. I'm happy to say. Well, I expected nothing less. And what about you, Stone? I'm afraid he still misses his mother. So do I. But it's been three months. It's time to get over it. Young man, tomorrow you will stop grieving for your mother and get on with your life. Is that clear? Yes, Father. All right, then. Good night. Good night, sir. I know. I miss her, too. The good Lord took your mother, but he gave you a new baby brother. Would you like some hot chocolate, dear? We could sit by the fire and talk a bit. All right? I'll be right back.
The Lord giveth. The Lord taketh away. Trust your standards haven't changed since I was a cadet. I assure you, Senor Alexander, you're still producing men like yourself. Men who lead the way for others. You'll do very well here. Work hard. Obey the rules. Now, my son requires a firm hand. Don't coddle him, understand? I want him hard and tough ready for the world. Learn to make friends. That's important. If your son has what it takes to be a great leader, I know how to bring it out of him. I'll come and see you, if I can. Driver. Five hundred years ago, generals formed their men in straight lines and sent them out to attack fixed positions with weapons like these. This seemed effective when combat took place face to face. 
courage, strength, and skill decided the outcome of the battle. But with the invention of firearms, particularly the machine gun, these same tactics resulted in the slaughter of thousands of brave men. What does this mean? As military leaders, you will be responsible for the lives of your men. You must match your tactics to the prevailing technology. Thank you, Cadet Alexander. Allora, ok, andiamo a mangiare. Ma perché no? No. Sì, ecco. two kinds of soldiers. Those who live and those who die. They are coming. Set up the perimeters. To live, you must learn to kill. Killers win wars. Cadet Monticelli, you and your squad have been chosen to defend Hill 31 against the attackers led by Cadet Alexander. The victors will graduate with special honors. <laughs> This is not just an exercise. This is the first step into your future. Take no prisoners. Fool. Well, Gabriella doesn't think I'm a fool. <laughs> Sorry that Fausto had to leave the academy. Why? You were very fond of him. He is a nice boy, but only to have a lot of fun with. Come. It is beautiful, no? Magnificent. You see the cats? They are everywhere. And 2,000 years ago, Lions and tiger were kept here. They were used to kill the Christians. Yes, the people loved it, I remember. 
from my studies. <laughs> yes, of course. Gabriella, do you think of me the same way you think of Fausto? Just someone to have a little fun with? No. Gabriella, stay. Stay with me. Please. Stay. Stay. This thing with Fausto is very serious. It will be a month before he's out of the hospital. Yes. We are all deeply saddened at Cadet Fausto's untimely departure. Very diplomatic of you. But there will be an inquiry. And from what I've learned, it will not go well with you, Stone. You have the sworn testimony of over a dozen cadets. Fausto's own men that say I was nowhere near him when this accident occurred. I believe you are in some way responsible for what happened. It will be up to me to decide who is punished. Which brings me to something more personal. Sir. I have seen the way you look at my daughter. Ah, oh, yes. It's a wise father who knows his own child. I would be pleased to have your permission to spend more time with her. That's out of the question. I hardly think you would make a good match for her, in spite of your obvious advantages. You're a natural-born leader, Storm, but you lack any sense of humanity. I don't want my daughter exposed to someone like you. Nevertheless, I'm afraid you won't be able to keep us apart. Really? In return for your permission to see Gabriella, I'll not only allow you to keep your academy, but I'll give you something even more important. You think your father's money allows you to threaten me in such a manner? I'll inform your father that you are no longer welcome here. You will give me what I want, and in return, I will give you your soul. You're a mortal soul. Think of your brother. God! God! Attenzione! I want to be just like him. Yes, sir! Better to be who you are, David. I've decided to forego a military career. I've accepted a post with the European Union. Administration. Congratulations, son. Thank you, Father. David. Finally, we meet. So you're my little brother? Well, I hope I meet your approval. I'm impressed. Is Father preparing you to follow in his footsteps? Well, we're not in complete agreement over what I'm to do with my life, but we'll work it out. And won't we, Father? Of course we will. I wonder if I can have something to drink, something cold. No, I'll get it for you. you hurry back. I've got a lot to talk about. You know, the European Union, isn't the right place for you, Stone. You're not cut out to be a bureaucrat. Oh, I know what I'm doing, Father. I've got it all planned out. You should come home with me and learn the business. No. I was raised here in Europe. This is my home. Besides, there's more to life than just making money. I haven't done well by you, Stone. I want to make it up to you somehow. Come home with me. Let's... Build our dreams together. Hmm? What do you say? The three of us. A beautiful sentiment, Father. Not very practical, I'm afraid. 
I'm going to do things that you've never dreamed of. <laughs> I'm going to change the world. Dear old dad. You think I'm talking nonsense? You'll see. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, my name is David Alexander. You're Stone's brother. Do you know him? My father runs a school, and so I know all the cadets. In my opinion, America lost the war in Vietnam because of the media. The government failed to control the one weapon it could have used to win. Excuse me, General. Father. I don't know what you've made of my son, General. Believe me when I say to you, I don't think either one of us had a hand in making him. Why didn't your father send you here? Well, I guess he just didn't think I was as good as Stone. Maybe just different. I mean, yes, brothers, but two different people. Well, now I wish I had come here. Why? Mm, because it's... It's beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a place more beautiful. Um, well, uh, will you... Uh, are you going to become, uh, how do you say, media mogul? <laughs> A mogul? Mogul. <laughs> no, no, no. So I think I'd rather do something that helps people. Television does not help people? Not from what I've seen on the major networks. Stealing my bride, David? Oh, Stone. Well, I was just... Bride? What do you mean? I was going to ask you earlier, but I could never get you alone. <laughs> Since we have a witness. Gabriella, marry me. Marry me, and I'll take you to the top of the world. Please don't, excuse me. I, I have to get back. He's embarrassed. So sweet. She'll say yes. Well, if she does, when she does, and when she does, You'll be a very lucky man, Stone. Man makes his own luck, little brother. <laughs> luck? Well, we were certainly lucky to have this noble establishment as our guidance and inspiration for so many years. <laughs> this academy has produced some of the world's finest military leaders. Also, it's captains of industry, including, and here I must with some pride acknowledge, one of its most distinguished, sitting right there, my father. <laughs> Later on this evening, we'll dedicate this beautiful room as a concert hall to the memory of another remarkable father, that of my dear wife, Gabriella. There. Well done, Stone. Thank you. Well, both my sons have become better public speakers than I ever was. Oh, that's never prevented you, Father, from having your voice heard. Ah, through others. Huh. Well, it's not the style of the speech that counts, it's the content. Would you excuse me, Father? Stone? I'd like to speak to you, Stone. Alone. Of course. I believe we met here once before. 
Two times in 20 years, I think people are beginning to talk. How are you? <laughs> I'm old. How are you? No, you're not. You're more beautiful now than when I last saw you in New York. Darling David, you are my favorite senator. Congressman. Well, whatever you are, I missed you terribly. Mm. Mm. Old Francini. I miss him. Yes. He was like a father to me. More of a father than I was, I'm sure. You know, they say you begin to reappraise your life as your own mortality becomes more apparent. With all my success, I failed at one thing. And what's that? Raising you, Stone. <laughs> Nonsense. I rather like what I've become. Thank you for making my point. Would you like to dance? I'd love to. I have to be careful. This could be considered a political statement. What do you mean? A U.S. congressman dancing with the wife of the head of the European Union. By the way, what do I call you, Your Highness? Oh, David, don't be silly. Your Majesty is quite good enough. <laughs> There's something I have to tell you, Stone. Oh, yes, I know. You're going to give it all away, aren't you? Your television stations, your wire services, even your communication satellites. Give them all to the public. Yes, the great unwashed multitudes who've made you as rich as you are. Oh, I'm afraid if you're looking for redemption, Dad, that's just a little too late. I don't know how you found out, but it won't change anything. I'm going to announce my plans tonight when I make my speech. Oh, yes, yes, how appropriate. Castrating your offspring in front of strangers. <laughs> oh, I've always admired your sense of timing, but uh, I'm afraid I can't let you go through with this. There's really nothing you can do about it. Oh, I won't cut you off completely. No, there will be a generous trust fund for you and David. You will get the castle in Rome. David can have the Virginia estate. Both of you will be quite comfortable, I assure you. Oh, I require a great deal of comfort, Father. More than you'll ever know. How is life with my brother, the rising star? He never seems to need any rest. I just wish I knew what he wanted out of life. Well, he has you. Oh. What else could he possibly want? David, I'm being serious. So am I. This is unacceptable, Father. I will have what is rightfully mine, and that includes, well, everything. I've made up my mind, Stone, and nothing you say can change it. Too bad. You see, I'm going to need your media empire and the power that goes with it. Oh, yes, I intend to change the way things are done in this dim little world. Oh, I'm warning you. If you even try and fight me in court. <laughs> oh, dear old dad, always spoiling for a fight. <laughs> I suppose I would miss you if I cared anything at all about you, but... See... I don't. Go to hell. Feeling well, he went onto the balcony to get some air, and he must have. God, why wasn't I there? Oh, Father, don't try to speak. Yes. 
Nebuloser, Valde, Quando Tenebrarum Pondus, Cadet Super Pecadores. This is my blood, spilled by my enemies. Drink it and vanquish. This is my flesh, made foul with sin. Eat it and rejoice in my new kingdom. Woe to those that oppose me, for they shall be cut down like winter wheat. My wrath shall sweep like a dark tide over the suffering land. Oh, woe to those who stand in the path of my righteousness. Oh, woe. With the final terrorist stronghold destroyed, celebrations have intensified here at the historic Temple Mount in Jerusalem as we await the inauguration of Stone Alexander as the first ever Chancellor of the United World Union. Over to you, Chuck. Thank you, Dana. During Stone Alexander's reign, he has quite literally changed the face of the world. Using his great wealth, he has all but ended the problems of world hunger and drought, brought peace to the Middle East, and laid the groundwork for world government. Well, there you go. See what you can accomplish if you don't have to answer to Congress? I'm telling you, Richard, pulling our delegation was a mistake. It sends the wrong message. I think it sends exactly the right message. Well, right on time, Mr. Vice President. The show hasn't started yet. Alexander's rise to chairman of the European Union was meteoric. National borders have been erased, as the world has been divided into ten democratic zones. Each zone's secretary general has one vote in the World Union Parliament. But with Alexander now ordained as sole chancellor, that will, in all probability, end. Dana? Let's go inside where I understand the chancellor is about to make his acceptance speech. My friends, you have built a magnificent house for me. My soul leaps to see all that has been accomplished. For I have said in my heart, I will ascend to heaven. And it has come to pass. I can't believe you're related to this old boy. Maybe he was left on my parents' doorstep. By a pack of wolves. I will raise my throne above the stars. And it has... Do you believe this madman? Sounds like Adolf Hitler, only with uh, attitude. You know, now that he has almost everyone in the world lined up on his side, he'll be looking for ways to put pressure on us. An economic embargo will be the first logical step. Cut us off from world markets. Where do the Chinese and Latins stand on this issue? Uncommitted. Here, I want you to look at this intelligence report. Satellite photos show lots of activity in and around Russian nuclear weapon storage sites. They're moving stuff around? Well, the CIA says someone's offered them a truck full of money for some nukes. That has not been confirmed. Who made that offer? Well, it's gotta be my brother. Nobody else could arrange for something like this without us knowing about it earlier. I have the Chancellor online. Put it on the screen. I'm staying in the Middle East zone for another day, but when I return to Rome on Wednesday, I shall expect you to be there. I'm a very busy man, Chancellor. Mr. President, the future of the world is at stake. What exactly is that supposed to mean? Ah, oh, man, proud man, dressed in a little brief authority. It means, sir, that my people will meet your plane in Rome in 30 hours. Admiral, what is the location of our sixth fleet at this time? Just off the coast of Italy, sir. Well, I'd say that's a mighty fine place for them. Wouldn't you, gentlemen? What are you focused down on over there, David? Don't you ever stop working? I'm putting together something for you, sir. Still trying to get inside my brother's head. Figure out what makes him go. Oh, hell, I know what makes him go. It's called power. Greatest aphrodisiac known to modern man. Hell, I take a liberal dose of it every night before I go to bed. 
Now, I need something that's gonna give me the edge when it comes to the showdown with your brother. Take a look at this. An insurance study. The CIA has compiled a list of 200 names that at one time or another opposed my brother, either politically or in business. Let me guess. Dead. Every one of them. How many of them died of unnatural causes? None. They all died of heart attacks, cancer, strokes. So, what does he do? Cast a spell on him? Don't get mythological on me now, David. Well, I'm just saying you might want to keep your distance from him. I know I can't do that. If I expect him to take me serious, it's got to be face to face, man to man. You know, sir, I think the vice president might be right. Well, you know, when you get to be president, we'll let you make those decisions. But until then, Jen. Oh. <laughs> 25, come on. Uh, yes, sir. Citizens of my world union, witness your first day in a united world! One currency, one language, one goal to strive every day to make the lives of all men better and better. One dictator? Oh yes, I know that some of you are thinking that, and I know where this fear is coming from. The same fear that caused dear friends to strike down Julius Caesar right there in the Roman Forum. Fear of what he could become. For Brutus said he was ambitious. But, dear friends, you have no need to fear my ambitions. I am no dictator, but I must lead. For men at some time are masters of their fate. I will not ask you to follow me, but to take the journey with me. This journey to a better world! How do you do, Chancellor? Mr. President. Ah, David. <laughs> My little brother. Gabriella sends her love and would like to see you if time permits. Thank you. That was one hell of a speech, Chancellor. Not as good as the one that got you elected. Well. Now that we've blown the appropriate amount of smoke up one another's hindquarters, do you mind if we get down to business? <laughs> With pleasure. I know that you have a whole mess of third world countries and socialist paradises all lined up like little ducks in a row, but the U.S. really has no desire to be involved in your so-called new world order. Well, I'm afraid it's not your decision anymore. You see, the United Nations and the European Union have folded themselves into my organization. In fact, your representatives to the UN voted for the accord. Those ambassadors have since been recalled. Mr. Vice President, I think you, you understand me well enough to know I only want what is best for everyone. Well, regardless of your intentions, I'm in complete agreement with the President. You can't be the only boat paddling against the tide. Isolationism is so passé. No, the North American zone must join the others. <laughs> North American zone? <laughs> you and your people can call it whatever you want. But as long as I'm breathing, I am the president of the God-blessed United States of America. I see. Well then, there's uh, nothing more to be said, is there? Gentlemen. Good day.
David. Gabriella. Ciao, David. How's your president? He's not doing very well. Oh. Stone called me at the hospital, said that he needed to see me, that it was urgent. He's been delayed. I took the liberty to prepare the lunch. Can you stay? Of course. Oh, good. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's so good to see you like this. Mm. Just the two of us. How long has it been? Two years ago, July, at your fundraiser in Washington. I don't believe you remember everything. <laughs> Everyone fell in love with you that night. Everybody but you. You hardly spoke to me. Ciao, Gabriella. You were surrounded by admirers. <gasps> Besides, I've always been in love with you. Why, David? How sweet. I never think of you as being sentimental. Can I ask you something? Is everything all right between you and Stone? <laughs> what a thing to ask. Of course. Because of him, my foundation is a tremendous success. Do you know how many kilos of food we sent to starving nations last year? Over 500 million. But are you happy? <sighs> happy, happy, happy. Che cosa è felice? Gabriella, I'm afraid for you. Why? Well, it seems to me that anyone who stands in Stone's way ends up dead. You're crazy. Maybe. Maybe. But I want you to be careful. Why? Keep your eyes open. Will you do that for me? Please? I'll keep my eyes open. Chancellor will see you now. I'm so sorry about Benson. I said a little prayer for him, but <laughs> one never knows if God is listening. You think you got away with it? Don't you? I beg your pardon? I don't know how you did it, but I'm going to find out. You don't like me, do you, David? Hmm? No, come on, don't deny it. You really don't like me. What do you want, Stone? I trust you had a decent lunch and a nice chat. <laughs> ah, my wife. She's so loyal. I value that quality above all others. Is this what you wanted to talk to me about? In a very short time, you will be president of the North American Zone. I want you on my side. Please hear me out. You are my brother, David. Your family. Blood. And that means something, even to me. We were never family. David, I'm trying to help you. Don't you see? Together, we can rule the world. Yes, join with me and I'll raise you up. You'll be second only to me. You're out of your mind. I have that power. I can make it happen. As long as we have the Chinese and the Latins on our side, you don't have a chance in hell of getting what you want. Oh, I'll always have a chance in hell, David. Oh, come on. Come on. Join with me in this great adventure. I promise you, you won't regret it. Bye, Stone. This is unacceptable, Father. I will have what is rightfully mine. 
What have you done? Oh, it isn't what I've done. I think it's rather what you've done, isn't it, David? You don't really expect anybody to believe that, do you? I wasn't even up there. There are witnesses. This is television. People believe anything they see on television. And besides, before you can prove otherwise, your credibility will be as dead as dear old dad there. Don't push me. Oh, goodness. Does my wife know what a violent man you are? Mr. President. David. David, I'm sorry. What can we do for you now? I'd also like you to consult your Congress, President Alexander. And I would like my answer within 24 hours. You take care of yourself. We shall kill him. Unnatural deeds to breed unnatural trouble. Two thousand years. Do you feel it? Do you feel it all coming to an end? <laughs> Your sacrifice was but nothing. Soon you will bow down before me. And your father will see me for whom I really am, the conqueror of men, worthy to share, no, to assume his throne. Therefore rejoice, O oh heavens, and you who dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. We have received official word. Your brother, the president, still refuses to join us. Well, in the great scheme of things, my earthly brother is a minor inconvenience. So, after an eternity of waiting, the end is in sight. Yes! <laughs> Don't you understand that? They believe in me now. Me! Yes, test them. Give them tribulation. Spill out your bowls of wrath, unleash your plagues, I challenge you! Oh, bravo! Well done! But you can do better than that! Go! Pour out your bowls of wrath upon the earth! Bring it on! Fires caused by the continuing meteorite showers are still blazing around the country for the 11th straight day. While freak weather conditions persist across the world, flood waters in Belgium are still rising and the mudslides in Central America have sparked fears of the spread of disease. Yesterday's riots left more than 300 dead. This is part of a pattern of civil disobedience across the world that follows each new natural disaster. They think it's the end of the bloody world. They're rioting in the streets. Please. My people are not ungrateful, sir, but when a hailstorm destroys a third of our continent's vegetation... Godzilla, sir. Mr. President, you must hear me out on this. I am not going to change my mind about joining the World Union. Official notice from Rome. The World Union is leveling a complete trade embargo against us. Ladies and gentlemen, rest assured that I shall do everything in my power to resolve our problems. 
I will, in fact, be visiting all of you shortly to see them at first hand. He wants to control the world. When is world peace the same as controlling the world? When it takes away my freedom. Our freedom is a sovereign nation. Now, I will not be bullied by sanctions or embargoes or anything else he throws our way. I have given orders for mass executions of all dissidents and their families. I cannot tolerate disobedience at such a crucial time. Bravo, Kochinsky. The Veliki president. But, um... But let's not go too far, shall we? We don't want too many dead bodies lying around. It creates a rather bad impression. Mr. President, I must speak plainly. You are allowing a family quarrel to cloud your judgment. The people of this nation will not be at the beck and call of a foreign leader. And we will not give up the power to decide our own destiny. What about the renegade zones? The Americans and the Chinese? Something's got to be done. Yes. The Chinese have a half billion troops on our border. Oh, ye of little faith. If you would kindly excuse me for a moment. But rest assured that everything is going as it should be. Chaos only makes it that much more interesting. America will implode, and as for China, everything will be settled at Megiddo. This government has always been and will always be of the people by the people and for the people of the United States of America. Now this meeting is over. You will regret this, I promise you. Give my regards to my brother, would you? You have made the masses fanatical to make them instruments of your policies. We'll discuss all of this later. No, no, we discuss it now. There are things that you simply do not understand. Like anyone who gets in your way ends up dead? David told me that. Deny it. Oh, yes. Yes, I was forgetting my little brother sent you to spy on me. Oh, it is true. You killed your father. The president. I don't believe it. Oh, frailty, thy name is woman. <gasps> Look, just go back to feeding your pathetic poor and stay out of my business. If you didn't care about the poor, why did you spend your fortune feeding them? Because, my dear, the quickest way to a man's loyalty is through his belly. But still, they, they hold out their hands for more, always more. And you encourage them. Well, I'm sick of their, of their stench, of their misery, of their disease. So let them starve. Let them die. We have the whole world. And we've lost our souls. God. God help us. God. God! Oh, yes, I'm sure he's lurking around somewhere. So stay on your knees and hold out your hand and beg. Go on, beg for his love. Oh, you've lost mine. For indeed, you are my children, beloved above all others. But oh, my children, this world we share today is in chaos. 
I say chaos! 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 This is a plague area, sir. They find out I brought the military chief of our zone into an area this like is this. This is Mexico, Sergeant. This is our country, not a zone. You understand? Por favor. Señor Alexander, how can I help? I know your foundation was working in this area. I didn't realize I would have the pleasure of running into you myself. How many people have they lost in this village? I don't know. A hundred, maybe more. Tomorrow will be twice as many. Oh, God, help. You have seen a storm of fire that sweeps through your fields. You see a sky as black as night in the fullness of day. And you have seen your loved ones dying from a pestilence that rips into your cities, into your villages. You have seen this world we all love threatening to tear itself apart at the seams. And that is why you have come here today. You have come here for my help. I cannot help you. What kind of God looks at what's happening here and does nothing? Even God won't force us to do good. We must choose the good for others. I cannot help you because you have turned your backs on me! On me! I, who have fed your starving masses! I, who have given you peace the world over! And for this, what do you do to me? You deny me! You deny me! You deny me! Your God! Not true! You're not God! And for this, you will be... My will be done. Now she is standing before the face of God with all the dignity and respect that she was created for. She won't forget the general who risked his life today to come here to this village to care just for her. I trust your trip was as successful as mine. But I told you, let them die. Old ladies die every day. You really shouldn't get yourself so upset about it.
As earthquakes and other catastrophes continue across the globe, California today declared a state of emergency, bringing the total number of states seeking federal aid to 25. Food and gas shortages across the nation. It's almost biblical, sir. I hope I'm making the right decision. Today, congressmen from both sides called upon the president to accept the World Union's offer of membership, which would result in immediate relief. Well, at least the networks will be happy. Oh, yes. All this will send their ratings through the roof. <laughs> Wonderful invention, television. Does most of my work for me. There are three zones that still oppose you. Your own brother. Oh, yes. After all that's happened, he still resists. You must try at him. I've been warning you before. Never, ever presume to instruct me, ever. My brother, the president, will come when it is time. We gave the president our trust. We rallied behind him because we believed in his integrity. But his career has been based on lies. The Justice Department has obtained the following security camera video. It reveals that Daniel Alexander's death was no accident. Clearly, our president secured his inheritance through the abominable crime of patricide. Now, in our nation's darkest hour, his true nature is revealed. David Alexander is a man who will do anything, say anything to remain When did this press conference take place? About 10 minutes ago, sir. It's repeating on every network. Get him on the phone. It is time that David Alexander be replaced. By someone who can lead us through the Let me guess. The you. He's on the screen, sir. Breckenridge, you are a liar and a coward. You won't get away with this. David, can't we just talk like two men who love their country? Spare me the hypocrisy. Do you realize what you've done? FBI, we have a warrant for the arrest of David Alexander. Call the president. Open the gate. Do it! Because of you, we will end up getting in a shooting war with the other members of the World Union. Are you prepared for that? If they come after us, they better be ready for all hell to break loose. The Justice Department has issued a warrant for your arrest. This is treason. Mr. President, you leave me no choice. We've got company, sir. Get that chopper down here, now. Go condition red. So how'd you know this was going down? I've been in politics long enough to know that you always prepare for the worst. Mind if I ask where we're going? The chopper will hook us up with the Navy brass. They'll get us over to the Sixth Fleet in the Mediterranean. Take them up. Come on. Far enough. We're here to arrest the president. Not on my watch. <laughs> Sir, we have to go. We have to go! America is mine. The president has fled his office, and his government votes even now to join my world union. So, when we all gather in the Middle East, I trust that you will be there, too. The Chinese people will never bow before you. Mr. Premier, I know what the famine has cost you. Tens of millions. We could lose half a billion and still remain strong. You would sacrifice so many? Wouldn't you? I already have. 
There is a prophecy. The kings of the east will gather their armies on the plains of Megiddo, and so you shall. If all ten zones are not with you... Oh, they will be. We summon now. Mr. President, gentlemen, Secretary of State Breckenridge has declared himself president, pro tem, and will join the World Union. And we've received reports that the Chinese are sending troops to join Stone Alexander. This is the equivalent of a coup d'etat. I need to know, where do you stand? Stand, sir. Hello. You'll be all right. Trust your instincts and keep moving. Freeze up, sir, you're dead meat. Makes me feel a lot better. Brother Dave. Hold your body. Look, would you mind Hold turning out the lights when you finished? And uh, please get those filthy boots off my Obersnow carpet. He's not here. Better come with me, sir. you out of here 
between you and me? No. You must fight the beast. You will be led to a man who has eyes, but he cannot see. Follow him. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't be afraid. God has already prepared the way. You just walk in it. Trust him. After all, it is finished. <laughs> Sir, I thought you should know that the Chinese are rolling into the Middle East. Breckenridge has sent U.S. armor to follow along. The good news in all this is tonight's operations have gone completely unreported. Breckenridge has no idea what we're up to. Whoa. Hey, get out of the way! No, wait. I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. And on his thigh is written, King of kings and Lord of lords. I saw the beast, the kings of this earth and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse. I saw new heaven and a new earth, not pain, not pain, when evil is brought into the light. It loses its power. Save us. Save us. Save us. Save us. Save it. Save us. Save us. and the brightness of his return. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Save us. What just happened in there? I received a message. What are you going to do? I need to speak to the Chinese Premier. You mind filling me in? We're going to do battle with the beast. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Please understand, we're counting on you. Not like 
，在皇上我身上的官司钱可不好啊，小子。of the Middle East. When the Chinese Premier arrives a little later today with his army, the heads of all ten zones of the World Union will have assembled their troops to witness the most historic of agreements. The new leader of the United States has just arrived. Uh, congratulations, Mr. President. Prime Minister, how are you? As you can see, Interim President Breckinridge is there at Megiddo representing the United States government while the worldwide manhunt for David Alexander continues. Gentlemen, if we can use a special ops team to initiate a diversionary attack toward the center of his headquarters position and then move in force to secure the left flank, I believe we can roll up his entire line of defense. It's workable, but the way I see it, Stone's armies are here for a celebration and not expecting resistance. If we can wait for the Chinese, We'll be able to launch a full-scale surprise attack. Either way, a lot of people are going to die. Carry on. Sir. OK. Let's get to this. this. My troops, you have taken the first step on the journey to Jerusalem, the journey to a new world. All hail, Lord Alexander. As you know, the master wishes to reach out to all his subjects. To that end, Lord Alexander has selected European Zone Camp Number 3 for an informal visit at 2200 hours. Over the next 10 days, the troops of each zone will have an opportunity to meet the man who has created the new world order. be someone else anybody I'm scared I don't want to die but I know deep down that if I don't walk up that hill I'm already dead I'm in your hands Sir, I'm going with you. No, no. I'm going alone. You're not planning on coming back, are you? This is something only I can do. Thank you. Give him strength. He's on your watch now. I don't know if I have the strength to go through with this. So I'm asking for your guidance and protection. And most of all, for your forgiveness for always doing things my way instead of yours. Take my life. And make it count for something tonight. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Good evening, gentlemen.
Touché. Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you all to raise a glass to salute the arrival of my brother at Megiddo. And to acknowledge that from this moment I am indeed my brother's keeper. <laughs> Ah, David. Trust you've had a comfortable night. Beautiful day, isn't it? Sun's up, birds are singing, and all's well in my world. Your world is a sick, dark place. I know what you did to Gabriella. Oh, so that's why you're here. Oh, so when all's said and done, it's, um, it's really about love, isn't it? Oh, I must say, watching the two of you all these years, seeing how, how difficult it was and how noble you both were, never giving in to temptation. <laughs> yeah, it really was exquisite seeing the both of you being tormented in this way. <laughs> oh, oh. Did I touch a nerve? Sorry. I know who you are. You only think you do. Oh, it's a pity the way things have... Ended up for you, isn't it, huh? It's not over yet. All but the shouting. Brother, you. Dear brother, I'm prepared to offer you a last gasp. Join me, and I'll raise you up from your present miserable state, make you a king among men. You overrate yourself. You always have. Your people can't fight me. Well, no one can, really. All you can do is die. Not that I mind that, but who will I rule over if you're all dead? Who will I punish, eh? Come, David, take a look. Isn't it magnificent? The Chinese are arriving at last. Oh, yes, an industrious people. Oh, I'll put them to good use. He'll be here. Oh, really? Then, uh, perhaps I'll introduce you to him when he arrives. You've heard his heralds, haven't you, announcing his triumphant return? No. Oh. Uh, funny enough, neither have I. Well, maybe this time he has met his match. All your armies, all your weapons, none of it will be of any use against God. Oh, you still don't understand, do you? This battle between me and God is for the souls of men. These, uh, these bodies out there, they're, they're not my armies, they're my trophies. <laughs> oh, but you see, don't you? Yes, you understand. Your greatest creation, and they've abandoned you. Now they follow me. I've won. Now, I shall transform this planet into a paradise for my kind. My fallen angels will rise again. Oh, you've heard of the term hell on Earth? Well, this is day one of the new millennium. Starting tomorrow, it's going to get a whole lot worse. You won't be here tomorrow. The 
Chinese have turned against us. What? The Americans, they're attacking on this flank, and the Latins on the other! Fire! Surprise. So, you think you know me? Well, think again. Satan, Lucifer. This time, even yours. Your brother was a mere vessel I chose. A puppet, nurtured from spawning to do my handiwork. Destroy all who stand against you! Arise! It is I, your Lord, who commands you! Arise!
sick feet. You see? The tide has turned! No one can defeat me! <laughs> I am the power! I am Lord! Nazarene! Nazarene! 